Bigfoot Collectors Club presents Terrifying Tales from Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt! <laughs> I know a ghost story about you! Well, 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 hello! Oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> my, spoo- my spooky voice just ended up sounding like Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, no, it needs work. The line is thin. Yeah. How far, how, like, how long until we just have a Halloween Santa? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think they tried that with Nightmare Before Christmas, right? Yeah, Looking but I th- I'm talking, yes, true, thing. but I... I'm talking about like where Santa just arrives a couple of months early and he's like in an orange and purple suit instead of like, you know, he's like in a big orange suit like a pumpkin. It's like tax evasion Santa or something. Yeah, I just feel like I feel like Halloween is like really usurping Christmas as everyone's favorite holiday and like it's getting real merched out. I'm like, just I feel like Santa's going to show it. up any minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Get it. yeah. I see it. pull the plug on Halloween. He's pissed. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's uh, Bigfoot Collectors Club, uh, the show where we talk to amazing guests about personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm uh, your host, Mike Kill McHellion. Ooh, that's good. With me in spirit is your other host, Slice Johnson. And our spooky producer, Pragoor, sorry. Riley Berserker. (laughs) We forgot to do it the first two uh, weeks of Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt. We're telling extra spooky stories of high strangeness right here on the Clubhouse feed and on BCC The Other Side all month long in celebration of Halloween. Uh, Bryce, do you know what you're going for this year? Yeah, I do. I have a couple ideas, man. Uh, yeah, I th- I'm thinking. You, should I share? Obviously, yeah. By the share. time this, they hear this it, this is I, a podcast. Yeah, right? yeah. Let I, us I'm know. thinking. I, I'm really thinking about going as a macho, macho man. Uh, right? You know, I just love Classic. that dude. Yeah, yeah. So, I love it. Uh, but but then uh, I, but then maybe uh, something along the lines with uh, maybe I can get in with something Walker's doing. I'm not sure. What do you What are you guys thinking of going as? Mm. I Don't never go. Yet. I never you dress know, up. You just you, know? you never dress up. I what? never dress up, guys. It's a confession oh, yeah. I have to make. I never what? dress up. I, I saw it. what? I hand yeah. out candy. We have a big. My neighborhood goes all out every year, and I just I really never dress up. Yeah. You own one of those. This is my costume T-shirts. No, I should. <laughs> I, I'm, really I'm, should. I'm, I'm a real. I'm really <laughs> half-assed. I'm really. <laughs> I'm, I just feel like I'm too busy trying to get other shit done than make than you know to make a costume. Why don't you just put on like a black suit a and tie and be uh, Kyle from Twin Peaks? I love yeah, you it. You eat cherry pie and drink coffee. Yeah, you know what, Bryce? Just, just have a cup of coffee and then just be like, I'm this guy from Twin Peaks. What's his name again? Agent Detective. Dale Cooper. If you'd watch yeah, that, the You could say it just like that when I ask, who are there you? you go. Uh, Agent Dale, Dale Cooper. Cooper. Okay, I can relax because the Royals just beat the Yankees oh, in Game Two, <laughs> so we're good. Okay, right. I can. Focus I thought it was my idea tonight. that made you happy, but it wasn't. You checked the fucking <laughs> no. I do like the <laughs> there idea. There was one year I put on a suit and just carried a rose and said I was the Bachelor, and it was a hit. Let me tell you, <laughs> I was I was single at the time. <laughs> and the ladies were very into it. I was like, come on. This is not that. Like, just something about wearing a suit and having a rose. It worked. It, so, yeah. gentlemen, if you're single and you're out there, it just goes to Bachelor. Or the Golden Bachelor. Yeah, yeah. whatever works. <laughs> That's even How about better you, Riley? Question. You got the long hair. You got lots of options that we don't. What are you, what are you up to? I mean, the funniest thing is I, that I can think of is I saw a, a meme of a costume for, um, like, at the peak of... Uh, Return of the King, Denethor, and he's eating that tomato, you know? <laughs> so, like, it's a couple's costume, and it's him yes. and a tomato. And I was like, that is hilarious. But uh, I, I failed to sell Caitlin on that idea. Oh. We also weren't sure who would be the tomato. But... She could go, She could. you could carry the tomato, and then she could go as Pippin. <laughs> also funny. I mean, that yeah. would work. Your she height difference is good. swear fealty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, undecided as of that's now. A, but. That's like the, the best costume idea I've heard in a long time. <laughs> that's what I thought. Very funny. Yeah. Um, all right, everybody. Well, uh, like I said, we are celebrating terrifying tales from Zombie Bigfoot's Crypt to Crypt 
all month long. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Epic Foot Collectors Club, so you can follow along with all of our adventures. And uh, send in your stories of high strangeness, your personal stories of high strangeness, to uh, BigfootCollectorsClub at gmail.com, and we might read them at the end of the month. So please send those over. Riley, before we get into the spooky ooky, why don't you nominate our five-star Club Scout of the Week? Well, this is from none other, none other than Good versus Evil. Great yeah. username. Decapitated Cow? Guys, and Jessica, isn't it obvious? Our freaking K Junior Lol <laughs> 5 <laughs> <stars>. <laughs> That must have been who decapitated that cow in our <laughs> recent listener file story. I love it. Oh, that's really You heard about there the whale, go. right? That he oh, carried yeah. a whale carcass on top of his car and there was like fish juice going everywhere, whale juice going everywhere. <laughs> guy's nuts. I did hear about that after hearing about the bear story. It also took me a, a moment to realize that freaking was the F in that. And now I understand. You know, joke. I did too. But yeah. I wasn't going to warn you because it's That's more good. fun no, that it's way. It's more fun that way. Yeah. Uh, everyone, give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. It helps get the show more to more people. And we will read it on the air. I promise you. Okay. It's time for spooky stuff. If you haven't figured it out already, there's no guest this week. Maybe you're watching us on YouTube right now and you don't see a guest. That's because we're just hanging out, having a clubhouse hang with the three of us boys. Mm -hmm. And because there's no guest, that means there's no personal paranormal history this week. But that doesn't mean we don't have a segment for you at the top of the show. No, 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 no. A contraire. You may remember back in Wet Hot Alien Summer 3, Saucerama, I created a segment that everyone remembers and loves called Parade of the Humanoids. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, I love that. So I thought about, well, what would that be for ghosts? And I realized there are so many stories out there of like phantom cars and ghost trains mm. and like ghost riders. I said, a lot of hey, variety. we haven't done this yet. So I present to you a very special cryptid crypt segment for this month only. Soul Train! What? Spooky. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look at some spooky vehicles, ghost vehicles and ghost machines that might be out on our freeways and our America's train tracks, railways. <laughs> I like it. All right. Okay. Ghost machines. Great phrase, too. Yeah, there you ghost go. machines. So here we go. So the first one that uh, that comes down uh, the tunnel there is Lincoln's Funeral Train. Mm. This one's pretty fascinating just because they actually gave the train a costume, which I did not realize. Hmm. One of America's most famous ghost trains is the one that carried Abraham Lincoln's body from Washington to D Washington, D.C. to his final resting place in Springfield, Illinois. The journey was over 1,600 miles, and the train was draped in black morning gauze. Gosh. So they had actually, they dressed the train in mourning. I like it. Yeah. So it already Classy. looked spooky. The grieving locomotive is still seen today. It's ghostly image passing silently through, guess where, New York City, mm. where the train passed through in 1865. Still uh, draped in morning dress and lit by dim lanterns lanterns and accompanied by the sad sound of a toiling and tolling bell from uh the website ghosts of albany they say some people see a steam train moving slowly away and with it goes the darkness the chill and the clouds that obscure the moon others claim that they can see inside the train a crew of skeletons Halfway back in the train is Lincoln's coffin, surrounded by a crew of blue-coated skeletons. Hmm. Or the train is simply a blur. It has been reported seen between 21st Street and all the way up to Albany over the original path of the old New York Central Railroad. Wherever the train passes, the clocks become six minutes late. In spooky New York, S.E. Schlosser retells the arrival of the Lincoln Death Train inside Grand Central Station, which was built after his death. Hmm. Wow. That's cool. 
I mean, why? But <laughs> why was Link intended to by a crew of skeletons? That's well, yeah, I know everyone awesome. on that train like, died. Wait a yeah, minute, yeah, totally. <laughs> or when the, when they died, they they realized that their most important role in life was riding that train with Lincoln. So like, that's, that's just yeah, what they that's do what now. I'm doing, yeah. Like, I'll tell you this for that. Yeah, <laughs> this sounds like a, a job for Doctor Vankman and Doctor Spangler. <laughs> really, New York City. Ghost train, absolutely. <laughs> the Ghostbusters had to blast Lincoln back to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I never did like him as president. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next thing to come down the tunnel is the Phantom Train of Marshall Pass. Oh. Now, here's a little blip about Marshall Pass from Colorado Central Magazine, a very spooky publication. (laughs) At 10,846 feet in elevation, Marshall Pass remains among one of Colorado's precarious roads. The pass, located in the Sawatch Range between Salida and Gunnison, was discovered by Lieutenant William Marshall in 1873 as he was making a mad dash in search of a Denver dentist for a bad tooth. Thick. But Marshall's painful trip was nothing compared to the wild ride experienced by Denver and Rio Grande Railroad DNRG engineer Nelson Edwards and engine fireman Charles Whitehead. This is a great story. So after the railroad was built in the late 1800s, stories of a mysterious ghost train, a relic of a bridge crash that killed a few workers, was reported, and many engineers refused to work the DNRG railway. So Nelson Edwards and Charles uh, Whitehead became eyewitnesses one fateful snowy night in 1889 when... They claimed to see the phantom train chasing after their own train and the face of a laughing engineer behind them. As they approached a precarious bridge, one that they had been told had a loose track, the men claimed that they passed through a handful of ghostly crewmen working on the railway and looked back to see the ghost train derail and launch off of the bridge into the no. canyons below. Sweet. <laughs> this was in the newspapers. So according to the news reports, Edwards and Whitehead saw a message etched in frost on the engine's window that read, Years ago, a freight train was wrecked, as you saw. Now that you saw it, we will never make another. Ye, we will never make another run. The engine was not under control, and four section men were killed. If you ever ran on this road again, you will be killed. That's a big window. That's so Damn. much to etch on a window. Wow. Yeah, especially as when the train is careening. Especially when they had to go back and correct what they were trying to say. Hold on, there. Say. Hold yeah. on there, James. I'm keep going. It there's more here. I'm done. <laughs> So that's the uh, that's the phantom train of Marshall Pass. But gentlemen, Club Scouts at home as well, it's not just trains that are out there haunting our, our traffic ways. Uh, there's also the A3 Burpham Ghost Crash of England. Do you want to hear about this one? Clearly. Mm-hmm. With a town Indeed. with a name like Burpham, you know you're going to want seconds. Uh, on <laughs> December 11th, 20 oh 2002 a motorist driving down highway a3 in surrey uk near burpham called police to report a car swerving off the road and crashing off a steep hill into a ditch this was nighttime police arrived and discovered a crashed uh, maroon colored vauxhall i guess that's an english brand of car does somebody want to correct me on that and it's somebody does De- oh yeah, they will. <laughs> and it's dead driver. However, the body was in an advanced state of decomposition and the crash seemed to have been uh, the the car had a, a months of undergrowth below it and surrounding it. It was determined that the vehicle and the deceased had been there for at least 5 months, probably sometime since July. Whoa. So the person saw a car swerving off 
And then they did find a car, but it was from five months ago. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Trippy. So after an investigation, the body was confirmed to be that of Christopher Chandwell, age 20, who had been missing since the previous July after a late night of drinking with friends in West London. Because of the deepness of the ditch and the overgrowth of the countryside, it was very likely that thousands of motorists had never noticed the crashed vehicle below the edge of the road as they passed by. It seems that it took a possible message from beyond to lead authorities to Christopher's remains. Wow. Pretty cool story, right? That's like the most open and shut ghost case. It's like unfinished business. You Showing you the site, show someone this is where <laughs> this is where I'm dead now. Please tell my family. I and wonder though if the on. person that's was just wild. psychic and had a psychic vision, if it was actually a ghost or not. Yeah. But I mean, I mean that's pretty fucking that's wild. Possibility, yeah, yeah. That's it's, like the whole ghost question, right? Is it someone who's sort of psychic and just sort of sees things, or is it the thing itself? I mean, that's the, right. That's the also question. so eerie to think about all those cars passing by, you know, and just like never mm-hmm. noticing that there's like a dead body down there while the plants mm. grow up. Over yeah, it. spooky stuff. All right, let's move on down the train, where we shall find the the noise and the rumble of the Elmore Ghost Rider. No. <laughs> March. These, are, these names aren't very hardcore. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the Elmore, Elmore Ghost, Ghost Rider no, at your service. Like, hardcore enough yeah. for you? <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Uh, March 21st is a spooky date in the northwest town, uh, Ohio town of Elmore. That's the location and the date of the alleged anniversary of the death of the Elmore Ghost Rider. Now, the Ghost Rider was once a young man like you and me, fellas. The story goes that he returned from World War I to visit his beloved fiance. He drove out to her house on his motorcycle and walked up to her home to surprise her. But much to his despair, when he peered through the window, he saw her in the arms of another man. Heartbroken, the rider sped off on his motorbike, and as he speeded along down the dangerous country roads, the rider lost control of his bike and went flying off the pavement. He collided with a barbed wire fence and was decapitated. Holy shit. Yes, it is said that his ghost still drives his motorcycle around this winding country road today, especially near the bridge where he crashed. Local legends dictate that every March 21st, if you drive up to the bridge, the uh, ghost light of the ghost rider will appear. On it, uh, and one uh, at least one Ohio folklorist named Richard Gill put that legend to the test, and this is a pretty fun story that I found on uh, one of I was Ohio's say, folklore could, yeah, sites. Can, can you de- be decapitated by barbed wire? I, I mean, if you're clotheslined and if it's, you're moving fast enough, and it's a yeah, metal, so, right? It's yeah. a metal wire; it can chop right. your head right off. Pretty much anything yeah. can decapitate you at enough speed. A bird. <laughs> Thank you, Riley. Sure thing. A Twizzler. <laughs> Good to know. No, you're right. Yeah. A feather. That's yeah, true. Oh, you're going fast enough. You're going, going fast right enough. Off. I'd like to see the feather decapitation. I'd like to see. <laughs> we got to get Mythbusters on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A big feather would probably do it. So Richard Gill is a man, I'm reading from the site now, Richard Gill is a man who has managed to become something of a folklore hero, as he is the one said to have conducted the only scientific experiments related to the Elmore Rider. According to Gill, in 1969, he and an unnamed friend drove out to the bridge on March 21st and attempted to summon the Rider. That's cool. They, They were successful, and the light passed by their car. Excited, Gill and his friend decided to try an experiment. Stretching a long piece of string across the road, they once again flashed their lights and summoned the rider. Once again, the ghostly headlight appeared and moved down the section of the road with the string across it. Trying to decapitate this I'm ghost like, again. Trying, what the fuck? <laughs> this is just rude. <laughs> After the light had disappeared, Gil went and, ex- and inspected the string and found that it was still intact and unbroken, even though the ghostly light appeared to have passed right through it. 
Undaunted, Gil decided to go a step further and asked his friend to stand in the middle of the road to see if he could make out anything specific about the ghostly light. <laughs> no, in the middle. I need you in the middle. Just That's have a look. What happened? Just, I just cars coming by. <laughs> tell me what you see. I love it too because he's like, if it's a light and it sounds like a motorcycle, just stay there and let <laughs> we it. We don't hit know you. if it is though. <laughs> That's Undaunted why out there. Yeah. <laughs> the name of science. <laughs> so, uh, 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 so, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. So the friend agreed and took his place in the middle of the road while Gil summoned the rider. As yeah. Gil watched, the light appeared in the distance and began moving towards his friend. As the light reached a section of the road where his friend was standing, Gil lost sight of his friend. When the light finally disappeared, Gil ran to the place in the road where he had left his friend only to find it vacant. Eventually, no Gil found his friend lying in a nearby ditch, semi-conscious and disoriented. He had no recollection as to how he had gotten there. At that point, Gil wisely decided that the experiments were over for the evening. <laughs> That's Why cool. was that Gil's decision at that yeah, point? Yeah, I think we've got enough for tonight, old chap. Well done on you. Why are you British? It's Ohio. I don't know. Uh, Gil's friends just, are entirely too British loyal sweet. to the man. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I put some in the rider as a as a song. That that's just metal to me. I love that. The rider. I love that. I love that their grandkids are like, Grandpa, where were you in the summer of '69? And he's like, uh, I was trying to summon a ghost rider on a bridge. Yeah. I wasn't see, really my, doing anything cool except just trying to summon ghosts. My friend Gil said uh, I should stand in the road. And <laughs> yeah. I just did it. I don't know. I woke up in a ditch. It was a crazy year. 69 was crazy, man. It was a wild time, kids. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, it's time for Bryce to open up Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt. Ooh. Okay, everybody. Here comes the crypt opening up, and Bryce, what do you have for us within its contents? What have you found? Well, you know, guys and ghouls, it's time for another week's story of high strangeness, and believe it or not, but it's a continuation of my last story of high strangeness, Mind Memory. Only this time, we're going to explore what happens to the mind when we die. Great. Not to mention <laughs> all the little death practice rehearsals we get every night when we fall to our sleep. For this is what I like to call the death dream. What happens when we die? And what if the afterlife is actually a lot like our dreams? I know it sounds a little crazy, but think about it. In your dreams, you're really only limited by your imagination. You can see anyone you want, dead or alive, travel anywhere in the world, perhaps even the universe. You can even look into the past or peek into the future. Sounds an awful lot like heaven to me. So what is this death dream? Well, in order to examine the death dream, we must first take a look at what happens to us when we die, or at least what the two main camps seem to be selling. The first camp is the materialists who think that once you are dead, that's it. And without the possibility of the brain and its activity, there is no mind, nor the possibility of a life after death, not to mention leaving zero of the possibility of a god. We're just a lucky accident. And when we're dead, it's lights out. Or as my dad used to say, it's like the song Bryce, all we are is dust in the wind, dust in the wind. He was a much better singer. But uh, you get the idea. Um, now, while the other side is shouting pretty loud, the other side is uh, also shilling their product as well. And yes, I'm talking about all the major religions of the world who've been telling us from day one that there seems to be some sort of life after death. Sure, they disagree as to what that looks like, but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty much agreed upon that some part of the consciousness or soul or mind survives bodily death. This may be referred to as the dualist position or the survival of the soul. Now, if you'll recall in my last story of high strangeness, I told you the story of a young woman who led an otherwise normal and healthy life 
aside from the fact that her brain was almost completely gone. Flooded in water in what's known as hydrocephalus of the brain, yet she remained... This is a real person we're talking about. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> clue it, it into... No, 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 yeah, yeah, it's spooky. Yeah, 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 it's spooky. Yeah, yeah, it's spooky. spooky. It's, that would be spooky. It's yeah. a spooky condition. Mm -hmm. Brains! Uh, yet she retained all her normal life functions, which left her doctors, as well as a few scientists, scratching their heads and wondering, how could that be so? And so... I offer you yet another case in the medical annals of history of a patient who has once again defied the scientific logic of the day. In 1982, a professor by the name of John Lorber of Sheffield University published a paper titled, Are Brains Really Necessary? He spoke of one case of a young yes. student <laughs> there at the university who had an IQ of 126 and had gained a first class degree in mathematics and was socially completely normal. And yet the boy had virtually no brains. The student's doctor, sorry, can't help myself. The student's doctor at the university, he noticed that the boy had a slightly larger than normal head. And so he referred him to Lorber, you know, simply out of interest. And when Lorber performed a brain scan on him, uh, what he saw shocked him. Instead of the normal two inches of thickness of brain tissue between the ventricles and the cortical surface, there was just a thin layer of mantle measuring a millimeter or so. Lorber's findings pose a dramatic challenge to conventional ideas about the role of the brain and have proven to be an inadequate at best when it comes to theories of the mind. So. Now that we've covered the materialist versus dualist points of view, let's examine how death may be more familiar to us than we think. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've all heard me talk about my experiences with lucid dreaming. We're on video now. I can't just mute. It that wouldn't anymore. be a story I of high strangeness like without like a loud throat clearing from Bryce. It's <laughs> 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 full. Uh, well, you know, he's just getting <laughs> the cobwebs you know. out. Yeah, know? yeah. Just yeah. yeah, the, the old so finely tuned out. engine, baby. Thank you, thank you. You've all heard me talk about my experiences with lucid dreaming, and so let's take a look at death and the lucid dream for comparison. Whilst lucid dreaming, you don't actually have a body, uh, you know, because I know my actual physical body's back warmly tucked away in my bed, hence the lucidity. But yet, once I become lucid, I am now well aware that I am an active in the dream space and I do have sort of a body. Let's call it the dream body. And in that quasi body, I can go wherever I want, do whatever I please, and still have my thoughts and my senses and my wits about me. In fact, oneironauts or lucid dreamers often report that their experiences while in the dream space feel, quote, more real than real, end quote, which to me is a clue. Here, why don't, why don't we have actual physical bodies, but our senses of the dream environment are, are there. We have sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. They're all there. And they're crisp, too. And let's not forget that we can still fuck. <laughs> this certainly shares some characteristics of what we're told happens to us when we die. No, I a saw a hand raise. Before. This seems like a good place for a hand raise. Oh. oh. Uh, what was that, oh, Michael? I, you raised I, your hand. That, that was actually me holding my head in my hand, but I did raise oh. my hand <laughs> earlier. Oh, okay. Did you say Orionaut? Oneironauts. What does that mean? That caught me too. That, I wanted to go back. Yeah, over that's that. that's the term for uh, a lucid dreamer, Oneironaut. So you're like an astronaut, but an Oneironaut. What is Oneironaut? What's the root Oneironaut? You know, I should have looked Not up means the etymology. Because like psychonaut uh, is like a yeah. person who. Yep, yeah, but it, it's the it means Oni. Uh, I think is dream Greek etymology. Look up etymology. How do you Greek, spell it? Uh, Oneironaut. Oh Jesus. It's in this the This is doc. sure a curve. Well, I couldn't here. find it in the doc. Okay, <laughs> uh, I found it. Oh, oh, oh no, etymology. Hold okay, on. a person who explores dream worlds. I never mm. that one. That's okay. cool. Yeah, that's yeah, that's I like it. Right. word of the day. All right. Yeah. Oniro, oh, here, here we go. Here we go. Oniro oh, oh, means oh, Niro. Yeah. dream. Oh, thank you. There you go. Ah. Perfect. Thank you. It's from Michael. the ancient uh from ancient Greek Oniros. So you were dead on, <laughs> Bryce. All what right, here turn. we go. Well, carrying on. All right, continue, please. 
Egyptian high priests recognized dream time as a form of death practice and became obsessed with survival of one's consciousness after the passing of the body, even going so far as to preserve the body and its organs in order to give the soul body as much time as it needed to traverse the vastness of space. And what about those near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences? Yet again, the reports of experiences of these strange, yet highly credible and widely reported phenomena sound awfully familiar to lucid dreaming and, well, death as well. Albeit with one major difference, of course, the NDE, or near-death experiences, was more likely triggered by a traumatic experience likely ending in death. And while the former takes place in the dream space, the latter usually takes place right here in our physical world. Uh, that's why you'll hear NDE experiencers often describing seeing their bodies being operated on from above the surgery room. Uh, so yet there they are, right? They're in this sort of quasi body again, uh, but the environment is our physical world. Strange. Only what happens next in an NDE is also a little bit different from the dream because usually at some point a psychopomp or a spirit or entity that guides to see souls from earth to the afterlife interjects and offers aid to the recently departed only to realize shortly thereafter that it's not quite yet their time and so they spiral back down to earth and recede back into their bodies. And when often when people report having out of body experiences they report being basically a ghost version of themselves just walking around, just like in the movie, well, Ghost. So again, here are some experiences of retaining not only a good portion of one's individuality, soul, mind, whatever you want to call it, but a good portion of one's body as well. That is to say, a different body than the one lying on a slab, uh, and who knows? Maybe you can see your body however you like. So now that we've explored the idea that these out-of-body experiences, including NDEs and lucid dreaming, may be a snapshot of what's to come, let's explore what I think happens to us when we die. But first, here's a special message from our sponsor. <laughs> Here's what I think happens when we die. When it first happens, it's like becoming lucid in a dream. It has that holy shit factor. But instead of I'm dreaming, it's I'm dead. And once you've dealt with that stark realization, you realize that you immediately have access to not only your old life and the people you cared about, but well, everything. And that's when it hits you. What do I do now? It's probably at this point in time you'll be more than likely confronted by a liaison of death, perhaps in the form of an angel, perhaps in the form of a devil, or if you're lucky, maybe even Elvis Presley himself. It's then that this death counselor will instruct you on the general goings on and provide you with some afterlife options. Or maybe it's like the Egyptians suspected and as soon as you're gone, you better haul your soul's ass to the Sirius star system and reunite with the ancestral kings and star gods before your body decays back on Earth. Bryce, and hopefully that's exactly what Riley's going to do. That's, a, that's <laughs> Riley gets a, I feel like Riley, when you die, you get a one way like speed pass. You get, a, you get well, like a fast pass to the Sirius system. <laughs> hopefully he remembers all the passwords and secret handshakes to get there. That is my downfall is remembering. You're I like, fuck, I guess just send me back. To, and it's like, cannot be an old password. And I'm like, no, serious <laughs> sky gods. Or maybe it's like how Ellen Watts used to describe the great equalizer. He likened the moment of death like being found by the seeker in a game of hide and seek. Only the realization is that you are and always were both the hider and the seeker. And with nothing left but a smile on your face, the hider says, you want to play again? Only this time, you be the hider and I'll be the seeker. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I have questions. 
Me too, but what a ride. All right. What a ride. Um, uh, am I dead? Is that what's happening right <laughs> wait now? A, wait a minute. <laughs> I hope not. Can we ask some questions about yes, this, Bryce? Yes, please. Yes, let's dive in. So what was the, what was with the big-headed student? How did, how does that connect to uh, the afterlife? Oh, well, well, the guy was just missing so much brain mass. I mean, just so much brain mass. It was hardly even there. Again, yeah, we just confront... Brain. Just again with confronting science that, uh, you know, all these all these mechanisms assigned to the brain may not be so, you know, Uh, I I think this brain is just a receiver. Really, it's just this like really highly tuned receiver of information. And uh, and it doesn't work in sections or, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, we know science tells us that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there is a lot of. I, f- I hear what you're saying because I you know I like the I, I I feel like what this all gets at if I'm following you is the idea that like the brain is the receiver for what you're arguing is that the brain is a receiver for a consciousness that comes from someone else of is sending the signal okay um but the brain but the brain yes. still has to control the physical body as well so there are functions that it does for like yes. the central nervous Abs- system and all absolutely this stuff. We know absolutely that. and and i would i and i would and i would proffer that in these in these highly rare cases i would imagine the remaining brain mass takes over a lot of those functional activities uh, of normal body living and so you know you're not going to find traces of hidden memory in there or like experiences or like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, um, yeah. I mean, I would say in that case, like if anything, it just speaks to the adaptability and complexity and like of, power of the brain. I um, think so. There's just so much we still don't know about. That's definitely true though. Definitely. You know? definitely I mean, it's yeah. still a puzzle. Mm-hmm. An absolute puzzle to scientists and academics alike. But I don't think that like, you know, because one kid had tiny brain that we don't need brains. Like, I think. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's <laughs> just, I mean? it's just the example to point out that yeah, no, one white crow until one Kirkland melonhead taught us black. we don't need our brains. Uh, but, but what? No, I, get, but, I get what you're doing there, Bryce. I, yeah, this I, I isn't do. about brains. This is what. Yeah. This is about. Do we survive death? Like, do do we do we go on in some way? You know. So are and you I'm just firmly? Pointing to a, Oh, Are you ahead. firmly in the, the the dualism camp that you laid out as absolutely. opposed to the materialist camp? Absolutely, I, yeah. I absolutely. I just, uh, yeah, I, that's where I am. I'm in that camp that uh, that yeah that where this is more than just an accident, some cosmic, you know, trick, some you know, some random throw of the dice. So, mm-hmm. what do you think happens, Bryce, after the uh, the psycho pomp comes and shows you and tells you you're in the afterlife? What happens then? Do you think? Well, you know, if, if from there, I, I I really have no idea, so I'm just going to guess, right? I I would sort of imagine that it comes from the the imaginary work groundwork that you laid while you're alive. So, so everyone has a unique afterlife. If you're a Christian and and you sort of want that, like w- what you think might be heaven, you you might get a little bit of, of that. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to last an eternity, but that might be a, a little picture of something that you get to explore. For how can you explore something that you have no idea of which it is, right? So if the mind is operating outside of the body, you'll have, have to have had those thoughts of going to the Sirius star system, how to get there. The passwords, the handshakes, uh, death practice. What do I do? How do I move around? How do I use my quasi death body? <laughs> you know, all these are things that need to be explored. And if you haven't done so in the living life, good luck in the afterlife. Now, this I mean, leads- that's good. Yeah, you go. Go ahead. This leads my to my next question. How much are you uh, practicing for your death body in this lifetime, Bryce? Probably more than you guys. <laughs> well, be, you might be surprised. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. No, okay, good. I, I am doing death rehearsals. Absolutely. I am I'm constantly doing thought experiments of what happens when we die. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you're getting into like a lot of sort of like Buddhist uh, ideas and teachings just about um, that sort of life is like this preparation for death and like dying gracefully and without leaving behind, you know, ripples mm-hmm. of karma and um it is i mean it is like that is our it is the one it's like it is our ultimate function you know like everyone's gonna do it so it and you spend your whole life preparing for it so and it can be approached with you know fear and kicking and screaming or it it can be 
you know, kind of what you're laying out is like almost embraced like a teacher or something, a guru or whatever you want to call it. Like death is like the ultimate teacher, right? This is the last lesson. So it's like, I, 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 uh, I get, I get, I get what you're, I'm picking up what you're throwing down, Bryce. What, mm-hmm, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. you know. Um, well, uh, Riley, I see. I sense that you are more uh, in the materialist camp. Would you? Would you say that that's probably so? I to me, I don't think there needs to be a line between the two in a lot of ways. I would say sure. if I if you had to put me in a camp, I would be more in a materialist camp. But I don't think that materialism precludes divinity or mm, like, I like I think, that. You know, because like nature to me is like. A just unanswered obvious. scientifical questions. Yep. Yeah, it's just more questions. Yeah, yeah. That, that, but like, you know, we're material beings. I'm I'm a material girl in a material world. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Like totally. that's all we yeah. have to work with is like yes. these these uh, senses, and then to some degree our our extra sense that we you know we made a podcast about. Um, but so yeah, I would say I I lean towards a materialist view of the universe. But uh, I think that still leaves a lot of room, you know? Yeah, not excluding divinity. I love that. Michael, how about you? Where do you sort of uh, put your chips in? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I like, I mean, I get, uh, I don't I have no, I have no clue, you know? Like, I, I, I go back to my, I go back to my, like, idea that I think that when we die, we wake up in another place, you know, that so I do right think too. consciousness could survive. I do think, I, look, I, I don't think anything. I, I like to imagine that, as I've said before, that our consciousness predates this life and will will exist. I, I think we go back to wherever we were before we existed. Mm, yeah, and that is yeah. either nothing or it's a place that we can't remember that our consciousness comes back to. Yeah. Right. Um, and I love we, it. Those are both great. I mean, obviously, you guys have thought a lot about it. I love both those. Everybody those are, does. Yeah, everybody does. You're absolutely right. And those yeah. are both beautiful. This makes me really want to, the stuff about the Egyptians really makes me want to. And I bought it like a year ago, you know, and I thought about doing it at some point, maybe around this time of year. But I just haven't gotten around to it because this has been a very weird year uh for death for me but like the tibetan book of the dead like i'm really interested because it pops up a lot in philip k dick's works Mm. and i really want to i've heard a lot about it and just like i want to like okay what is what's that all about and what's the journey what what's the journey there you know um because i know that that also deals with if you go to the white light, that's not really the spot you want to go to. That just spits <laughs> right, you back. Right. That just spits you back right. down here, and you basically right. can get stuck <laughs> in a cycle of reincarnation. From what I understand, and there's all the, you know, there's not just the white light. There's all these other different lights that take you to all these different, different off ramps, exits, oh, no. and off ramps oh, and rooms, and so you, you really find that secret VIP room. You have <laughs> to know, and they're all tempt. They're all they all call to you. So you have to. This is a very rough understanding from the little that I've gleaned. So I'm sure that I'm getting some of this wrong. No, I'm with you. I'm with but, you. But but there, there's this idea of like, no, no, no. You don't want to go to that. You don't want to go to that. You got to hold that for that gold light the gold lights where you want to go and the gold light takes you to like the next spiritual evolutionary step but and so that's another reason why you want to practice your consciousness for death because if you're naive and you're scared you might just run right to that white light and then you're back in this cycle again and, the, right, and i think the idea right. i think the like idea like hopping out of a lucid dream you scare yourself out of a lucid you're like yeah. oh white light. you're like no don't yeah. wait hang on and hang and, on. and and the goal there i think is like you don't want to be in this cycle of reincarnation you want your spirit to move on to like the cool stuff that's yeah. waiting waiting for us on yeah, the you other side. Yeah, you want to graduate. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that stuff is really fascinating spiritual and I find matriculation. That, I find mm. that really cool and I do think okay. to a degree that magical practices and uh, and spiritual pra- I mean religion is in essence a magical practice. I do think that all of this stuff from psychedelics that are are taking that are taken with intent to uh, rituals, to all this stuff, altered states of consciousness, consciousness are giving you and meant to give you a preview of what's Lose. coming next when, when we so die. Too. I yeah. think so too. 
Yeah, we're just we're we're rigged for it. Our body is tuned into it. it. All all of our body goes through birth and death, so we're finely tuned into the processes of life and, of course, death. So when we're getting those signals, it's because we deserve them. That's us. You know, that's what we do. We live and we die, and then we live and we die. And some um, stuff in between. And some stuff in between. And it works for <laughs> A lot of sandwiches. So because many I presented two cases where there were no brains. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie cryptid crypt. <laughs> well, good job taking something you already wrote and adapting it for, <laughs> for the Halloween season price. I love, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful scamp. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. It's uh, time. It's that time when we're about it's to say stretch. goodbye. But I before understand. we do that, and we're going to head over to Collector's Corner. But before we head over to Collector's Corner, let's thank some Club Scouts who have recently joined us oh, over yeah. on BCC The Other Side. It's time for Patreon shout outs. Woo! John. Thank you, John. Kalen Idatafar. Thanks, Kalen. John Golchinski. Thank you, John. Carson Raycliffe. Sorry, I do not have my glasses on, and I think I misspelled that one. We'll come back to you, Carson. Thanks, Carson. C- Cyber H, Cosmeteer. Cyber H, welcome. Camilla's Rainbow. I'll ride that. Thanks, Camilla. Alyssa DeMeo. Thank you, Alyssa. And last but not least, our favorite name of the week, Bryce's Cousin. Oh, thank you. I think Bryce's hey, cousin. Did we miss a name? Uh, is it from the... Jacqueline Champlin? Oh, Jacqueline Champlin. Thank Thanks, you. Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline. Bryce's cousin, I, I think, is this wrote from into that us. letter? Yeah, the, yeah, about the, the family. Haunted, yeah. The family ghost barn. Yeah. Oh, the ghost barn. Yeah. What's up, cuz? Um, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> so join us over at BCC The Other Side at patreon.com. Slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. You get three bonus episodes every month. You get a- instant access to our entire episode archive over there of bonus episodes, I should say, which are well over 260 at this point. Wow. Uh, for $4 on top of that, you get ad free episodes plus. You unlock uh, all of Riley's musical scores that he's uploaded over the past few years and and, and three bonus epi- bonus music tracks every month from Riley. Yeah. So come on over, oh, everybody. The water is 16 warm. 16 quarters. That's just 16 quarters. Carson Raycraft. Thank you. Sorry, Carson. Uh, I mistyped your name, and I wasn't wearing my glasses when I said it. So and I think you. my horse math is way off on yeah, that was, anyway. So. What did you, what did you Don't say? Worry, just let it go. Don't worry about it. We're just going to move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah just move on. <laughs> you know what? This has been a real horse math episode for me personally. I am I I have been dealing... Little uh, inside. I had another family emergency that I went yeah. to. Uh, I've been back home for the last week and a half dealing with some stuff back home. Everybody's okay. But I've been on like 4 a.m. Central Time mornings. So my brain is all over the place. So I just got back and I'm exhausted. So Dude, sorry, everybody. We all everybody. strive to be the family member and friend that you are. Oh, so really? kudos Thanks. to you, dude. So yeah. I'm just I'm playing catch up with our time zone. Who's parking over Nova. there? Nova is that Nova? Is, in his age, he has gotten so ornery that he just sort of demands treats. Um, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> so done. It's yeah. my time now. He sort of respects the snap still. I love oh. it. But that's about it. Beyond my that, look, my... at, you look at him. He's like, please. Look at him. There he is. Like, if you're watching on the YouTube. Shit. He's like, you're just talking. Get me treats. Um, okay. Well, let's swing by the collector's corner before we bounce out. What are we into? What are we watching? What do we want you guys to be into or watching? Um, I'll kick it off. I, I, I came into the episode with it uh, on my mind and literally on my head. Baseball is uh, I'm so excited to be in playoff season. I love baseball, and uh, it's a very special this year because my mom was a huge Kansas City Royals fan. She got it from her grandfather. She passed it down uh, to her children and her uh, niece. My cousin Jessica would go with her opening day at the K every year, um, and it's really fascinating, so... And, and I don't want to jinx anything either way, but I will say the year that my grandfather died was 1985 and the Royals won the World Series that year for the first time. Oh, wow. 30 years later, my uncle Jerry 
who was my mom's brother-in-law, her sister's husband, passed away, and the Royals won the World Series. What? That's for the odd. first time in thirty years. Whoa! Now I don't want to say anything, but our mm-hmm. family's already talking about it. My mother passed <laughs> away. Who's on this the chopping block? Oh yeah, my mother, mother right. passed away right. this Sorry. year. Jesus! Right. And uh, no, my mother already passed away. Well, in Bryce's right. view, right. no, she's, I know she's that. I know that. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, he knows. Again, my bedside manner. Out she's there. already yeah. been through the butcher's block, Good. Bryce. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. She's fine. She's hanging out in that area that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. she passed away, and lo and behold, out of nowhere, the Royals that have been basically dog shit for the past six years, seven years, are in the playoffs. Start run. getting the ball again. Yeah, no. big time. Wow. And uh, so we are in the uh, now. We'll know more by the time people hear this. So That's I might be weird. jinxing it. Yeah. But even the f- the fact that we even got this Ooh. far, it just mm-hmm. feels like my mom is uh, on the other side helping the Way team. Way to go, Mama team Mills. Win. Uh, so yeah, it's that's what just, I would have called your mom back in the day, Mama Mint Mills. It's kind of spooky. Um, okay, other than that, come on by our YouTube channel. Uh, you got to get over there. Come if if you listen to us on the podcast, come come follow us on our YouTube channel um, at Bigfoot Collectors Club on YouTube.com. We've got uh, original shorts up there. We've got uh, video episodes up there. Um, if you're a Patreon member, I. Th- think at a certain point we're going to be figuring out who's getting uh bonus video episodes over there so i'm telling you guys it's fun we're gonna we're gonna continue to do more cool shit over on our youtube channel so so come on by love that that's so awesome well look you know you may not know it or you may know it but uh we also do other stuff than podcasts. We got a couple movies out. Terrifier three is out in theaters if you can stomach it go see it i'm up starring bryce day. Uh, Expedition Bigfoot now on streamers. You can watch season five finally on Discovery Plus. I know you've been waiting patiently to see that. Uh, so that is also streaming when, on Max, I believe, as well. Yeah, this drops um, on like the sixteenth, so it mm. should be on Max by now, and everyone should get caught up, including Riley, because next month on the Patreon we will have a full uh, season five recap show. Yeah. Uh, where we're going to talk all about... And Bryce is doing some very fun stuff this season. Like, Bryce is like... I'll, I'll bring a big fat heater, Riley, and we can just binge it. Bri- oh, Bryce is like been... Oh, my God. What an honor that it's, would be, it, my friend. I just want to let everybody you are know. I just, I just want to let everybody know <laughs> that it's possible that Bryce has been within 40 feet of Bigfoot. At this point, the, the places this show has taken us is tr- truly remarkable. I mean, Shipping. truly, like Bryce is getting very close. That's all oh, I'll say. Oh, God, please find Bigfoot, <laughs> Bryce. Please just find it. Find Bigfoot, Riley. What do you got? Um, my most of my free time lately, I've been getting back into the um, the AI assisted programming. I just did a post on my Instagram of this uh, this app, this little program I'm working on. In very short form, it takes an audio file, and you can slow it way down or speed it way up or reverse it all in real time and it sounds really nice and uh i likely used it on the score in this episode and uh no way that's cool i think maybe i don't want to make promises i can't keep but i think maybe eventually i'm actually going to make this one like you can have it um or oh, maybe cool. Sell it? I, I thought you were, I'll probably, I'll probably just give it away to start. I um, thought you were going to say, I think maybe eventually I'm going to just merge with this program. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a given. But that's happening. Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't know. This I'm not a programmer by any stretch of the imagination. And I know that AI uses a lot of energy and water, but I'm also been a vegetarian for a really long time. So there's my offset. I'm it's I it's crazy. That I can, that I have the ability to do this because I yeah. cannot do this, and now I can, I can write computer code. It's bonkers. I mean, I exactly write it, but I interpret and understand it. Uh, anyways, uh, making programs, great, yeah, it's fun. Okay, cool. All right, everybody, come see us over on YouTube. Uh, trust us, we got fun stuff over there. If we don't see you there, we'll, we'll cry. We'll see you uh, back here next week. For another visit into Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt, good night. And go get regressed. Watto from the Phantom Menace? (laughs) What are you doing here? I'm a zombie. (laughs) (laughs) I got no brains. I don't need a zombie. (laughs) Zombie Watto's Junkyard Jamboree. Do you 
think that kid's brain was like the zombie delicacy? Like, it's like oh, oh, yeah, ceviche. I was like, hey, dude, I got no brains, but I got all the brains. Bigfoot Collectors Club is executive produced by Michael McMillan, Riley Bray, and Bryce Johnson. Our show is engineered, produced, and scored by Riley Bray. Our theme song, Come Alone, is by Sun Eaters. Follow them on Spotify. Want more BCC? For exclusive full-length episodes every month and total access to the other side, check out patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club.